அதிக பூச்சிக்கொல்லி விஷத்தை பயன்படுத்தும் மாநிலங்களில் தெலுங்கானாவும் ஆந்திராவும் முன்னணியில் இருக்கின்றன விவசாயிகள் தற்கொலை அதிகமாக நடந்து வரும் மாநிலங்களில் தெலுங்கானாவும் ஒன்றாக இருந்திருக்கிறது விவசாயிகள் பூச்சிக்கொல்லியில்லா விவசாயத்தை மேற்கொள்ள வேண்டும் என்பதற்காகவும் இயற்கை விவசாயத்தை பரவலாக்க வேண்டும் என்பதற்காகவும் தீவிரமாக செயல்படும் அமைப்பு நீடித்த வேளாண்மைக்கான இயக்கம் அதாவது சென்டர் ஃபார் சஸ்டைனபிள் அக்ரிகல்ச்சர் தெலுங்கானா மாநிலம் ஹைதராபாத்தில் இருக்கிறது இந்த அமைப்பு இந்த அமைப்பு இயக்குநராக இருப்பவர் வேளாண் விஞ்ஞானி ராமநாஞ்சநேயலு தெலுங்கானா மாநிலத்தில் அதிக அளவு விவசாயிகள் தற்கொலை நடந்து வந்த எனப்பாவி என்கிற கிராமத்தில் இயற்கை விவசாயத்தை பரப்பி விவசாயிகளை தற்கொலையிலிருந்து மீட்டு அந்த கிராமத்தில் விவசாயிகள் தற்கொலையை இல்லாமல் ஆக்கியிருக்கிறார் வேளாண் விஞ்ஞானி ராமநாஞ்சநேயலு பேசுவதை கேட்போம் Uh, we started this organization in 2004 and uh, one of the main uh, uh, objectives of starting this organization is uh, when andhra pradesh had large number of farmer suicides so some of us uh, who are working in agricultural research so i mean i used to work as a scientist in icr and uh, had couple of other friends who are into this similar kind of institutions so we all thought uh, we should find some systemic solution for uh, the crisis in agriculture mm. so uh, so we were trying to work with various uh, ngos and then we were trying to look at across the country uh, how alternative models of agriculture are being promoted so one of the thing we found is uh, while there are lot of attempts to make uh, agriculture sustainable so looking at uh, biodiversity conservation or organic farming and various models which are tried all are remaining as uh, islands of success so there is one successful farmer here there is another successful farmer there so people only talk about successful farmers and uh, seeing them uh, other farmers are not actually converting and that is because the mainstream government programs are always uh, going towards uh, promoting of chemical farming so unless uh, the mainstream agriculture programs change uh, farmers will not change because many of the small and marginal farmers who look for day to day uh, living so they look for some support from the government to make a rapid shift that is one factor we found second we also found uh, many of these uh, practices which are being promoted are also mostly ideology and uh, belief based Um, rather than taking a scientific approach so what we thought is uh, we also need to properly do research in terms of looking at uh, uh, what can be adapted to what conditions kind of thing so because india if you take uh, has different kinds of soils different climate uh, and different situations so each one needs a different approach it's not one solution fits for all kind of thing so that's what we started looking at and then uh, from a uh, organic point of view or uh, i would we we actually call it as agroecological approach so agroecological approaches so we try to pick up best practices from all kinds of models so from organic farming from natural farming zero budget natural farming or biodynamic farming uh, permaculture so whatever the best practices are there we try to put them together and then started trying to understand that so that's how actually our work began and then we started in 2004 uh another thing also happened so one was the farmer suicides issue second issue is about uh, looking at uh, the alternative models of agriculture uh, entire andhra pradesh so we had uh, at the time the state was uh, together and then we had a large number of suicides in fact uh, farmer suicides began in 1986 in andhra pradesh so and then from 96 to till now if we take uh, it's a huge number so andhra pradesh is somehow was serious so that is one issue second issue was about alternative models were there but again they are all isolated and uh, not very scientifically promoted no support from the government so how do we promote that is the second issue third important issue also during the same time was the whole debate about uh, bt cotton so bt cotton came in and then uh, so on one side there is a discussion that it is a scientifically uh, great technology it will solve all the problems kind of thing but when we actually try to look into the whole issues there are a lot of scientific problems in that 
so the debate was about uh, an mnc company is coming and so th they are not actually getting into the scientific problems associated with uh, the basically understanding it scientifically as well technical problems so we tried to make analysis of that and then we actually brought out couple of reports even before 2004 before forming of the organization so there is a third one fourth one uh, fourth factor which we also try to look at is the economic policies say for example the way prices are fixed the way imports are allowed the way exports are allowed economic policy decisions are also not based on realistic estimations or understanding from a farmer's point of view so we try to copy from the west so what we thought is to work on all these issues we need an independent institution which can work on so from there actually we started uh, looking at how do we establish this institution and then how do we move forward so that's how csa was uh, uh, created in 2004 so the first thing we picked up was on the pesticides issue <coughs> so telangana and andhra pradesh uh, in the country one of the highest uh, pest, uh, per hectare pesticide using uh, states second <coughs> in terms of cost of cultivation we also have the highest cost of cultivation so what we thought is unless the cost of cultivation comes down farmers will not benefit out of it so we try to reduce the pesticide use and then completely give up and then try to train farmers uh, what we call as npm non pesticidal management non pesticidal management don't use pesticides we can grow crops without using pesticides so that essentially needs farmers to understand the life cycles of the insect and change the cropping pattern so that the pest problem is comes down and if there is a pest incidence identify early and then use the control measures so it's a simple practices for every crop for every pest how to do is what we trained farmers so we used farmer field school approach we call it as farmer field school where the farmers are trained into the field and then explained about the whole process and then trained and uh, again when we started doing this we also tried to focus on the entire village not on few individual farmers like i initially said they were all remaining as islands of success so can we get all farmers together and uh, we had by 2005 we had uh, couple of villages which could completely give up pesticides so one village was in varangal which is called yenabavi varangal district it's called yenabavi there is another village called punukula so these two villages uh, so punukula became pesticide free and uh, yenabavi became completely organic so they were actually using lot of pesticides and then in 2 3 years they could actually give up so these two examples gave confidence in many farmers to make a shift and uh, government also at that time because there was a large number of farmers who said it's happening so government also came forward to see how this can be taken forward so we partnered with uh, women self help groups and uh, through the women self help groups uh, we could actually bring down the pesticide use significantly and uh, since the women are already organized so it was easy for us to replicate so across the state in 3 to 5 years time we could reach out to almost the, uh, near about what 13% of the state we could reach out in 5 years time so in 5 years almost 13% of the state about 30 lakhs acres is what we could able to cover and the pesticide use could be brought down significantly so that is a one major shift and then that gave lot of confidence not only for us but also for farmers and government that it is possible uh, but we need to invest and then do the trainings organize people so that approach was taken up so that's one major success which we had uh, by 2008 so second thing what we did is so that is one approach and then now uh, from there we moved on to organic and then uh, several other areas we are trying to work on that second issue we picked up uh, and then we started looking at is see one of the key thing uh, with the government programs is that the government staff are not answerable to the farmer because they are paid by the government and then they will report to the government and then farmers are left out like that so what we thought is the staff uh, from the block level down should be responsible for the farmers for the welfare so what we tried is to take out all the staff the recruited for this program and then all their salaries will be paid by the farmer group so farmers will review the performance and then it goes to and then they will pay and that so we call it as community management 
So community manages the extension system. It is not the government. So government only releases money, but actually management is done by the community. Because the second major problem is the market. So one production level we could do something, but that cannot remain sustainable unless economics work out. So economics uh, not only on saving cost, but also from the market we need. Because average share of farmer in the consumer's price is only 20%. Mm -hmm. Matlab, if farm, if I am buying rice at uh, 100 rupees in market, in that farmer gets only 20 rupees. Rest of all is a middleman. And these middlemen doesn't add any value. It, they just aggregate. So there are two, three levels of aggregation happens. Most of the vegetables, most of the gra uh, grains. So what we tried is uh, whether we can organize farmers into a cooperative and uh, this cooperative can actually do all those middle operations which are done by the middleman and uh, can sell directly to the consumers. So this is a farmer's cooperative and we also formed a consumer cooperative. So together they came together and that is called Sahaja Aharam. Sahaja means natural. Aharam is food. So Sahaja Aharam means natural food. So in the name of Sahaja Aharam, they started uh, selling in Hyderabad and uh, now we have seven stores. So this Sahaja Aharam, we started with one store. So farmers own store. So farmers cooperatives are there. There is a consumer cooperative. So both together sell the food. So consumer cooperative buys all this and then store process and then sell. So we have, uh, so all these are together registered as a producer company. It's a federation. So this federation buys everything and then sells. And uh, we are expanding also. And uh, all these stores sell only organic food. And all are produced by farmers uh, who are members. And uh, we sell about 200 products. And uh, all of them are certified organic. So that is one thing which we are able to do. And uh, whatever consumer pays, so farmer gets more than 50% of that. So that is the uh, effort which we could make. That's a consumer, the federation. So what we th tried is whether we can improve this last mile delivery of support services. So we have large number of volunteers who also work with us in several villages and uh, urban people also who go to the villages. So what we tried is to work with district administration and then get uh, access to the departments. And we also run a helpline for farmers. So this helpline is called Kisan Mitra. Another is uh, CSA is also a PGS regional council uh, and PGS uh, participatory guarantee system for organic farming. So we are an authorized PGS regional council for uh, entire India. So 30 states we are doing, including Tamil Nadu. So CSA is a PGS regional council. And uh, we also developed mobile applications for farmers in terms of organic approaches. So how to say how to manage their pests, how to manage their crop, all that. It's called Pestoscope. Pestoscope. P-E-S-T. Uh, C-O-S-C-O-P-E, Pestoscope, like Chetoscope, it is a Pestoscope, so like this, so farmer, anyone can see the crop and then if you click on the crop, you get all the, the list of uh, pests and diseases and then they can identify and then sell and then uh, do and if they, can, if they cannot see the uh, problem, they can also take a photograph and sell. If, if you see th this is the pest or this is the problem, they can identify. And then uh, the moment they identify it, they can get the entire solution. And if they cannot identify the solution, uh, here uh, they can take a photograph and then send it to us. So uh, both ways uh, they can get the solution. And how to do it organically, all information is there. And the phone automatically identifies the location. So we get the information from which farmer, which location, and then uh, what crop what problem kind of thing. So we immediately get back with the solution.